The water sector is relatively late to the discussion about innovation. There's very low R&D intensity. There are very small number of companies uh, being born, very, very few startups, SMEs, etc. And we were wondering whether that's really what's going on. So that's why we thought, let's launch this call on the dynamics of water innovation to really dip uh, deeper and to also take a much broader view of the water sector. And we see that there's a very diverse picture coming up in terms of there are no generic drivers. For example, regulation can pan out to be a strong driver for innovation and for the adoption of innovation in one case, um, in terms of water quality, but then also it can hold back innovation in other cases. The same for the communities. In some, in some instances where there's uh, water pollution industries polluting the environment, some communities nevertheless are against the adoption of, of advanced wastewater treatment technologies because it could potentially um, drive their employers away out of the region. Whereas communities that are very much driven by tourism are very much in favor of adopting uh, advanced wastewater technologies. What we see in other sectors, which is the, the need for incubators, the need for demonstration sites, the ways in which we can physically, interactively bring the different stakeholders in the innovation process together is the same in the water sector as it is for other sectors. Um, UNESCO IG is a category one institute under UNESCO um, we're the largest postgraduate uh, education facility on water. We really cover the whole spectrum of water sciences and also technologies. The role of the Institute in, in the innovation process is very much to strengthen that local knowledge base. So we're very concerned with the local impact, um, with, with the capacity not only of people but also of organizations and the way in which these people and organizations can, can play a key role in the innovation process, also by very much identifying the local demands. One of the projects I have recently acquired is an innovation platform, an innovation alliance, to try and strengthen the ties between Europe and Africa. Because Africa, arguably, is one of the areas in the world, one of the regions in the world, world most in need of innovative solutions to face uh, climate change challenges and climate change impacts. In this new project AFRI Alliance, which is the Africa EU Innovation Alliance on Water and Climate, we have actually modeled ourselves with that project, with the platform we're trying to set up, very much on the EIP for water. We saw the benefits that the action groups bring. You know, it's a very diverse set of communities of practice that we've seen emerge. So Let's model ourselves on that in terms of how we set up Afri Alliance, but let's also link the effort that we make in Afri Alliance to bring the African networks together, bring the African stakeholders together, and then have stronger links with Europe. For example, with concrete links to the marketplace. Also in Afri Alliance, we're setting up action groups. So we really want that demand-driven uh, innovation uh, coming from the ground, we're going to use citizen science approaches for that to really identify the local demands because only then can existing solutions or can existing knowledge help to address those demands.